the techniques we used for this was a combination of you know energy flow meditation mindfulness meditation where you allow yourself to focus on something without judgment and without the need to manage or control bless you thank you um Excellent. Good. Yes, it's like when you're meditating um, or doing energy work, in a way, like times when you suddenly get a little queasy or vertigo or you feel pressure here or sharp pains or uh, you get like super hot and sweaty, if you invite your feet to relax, and invite the energy to flow through. It is amazing how everything realigns like very quickly, very, very quickly. Now, sometimes if you're doing like chi work, you want to build up that energy. At that point, like when I want to fire up my chi to like superpower something, I still ground, but I invite earth energy to rise up and divine energy to flow down and they're both hitting my chi energy at the same time. In which case, what's that like? The center of our earth, all that pressure is compressing to make a big ball of fire. In the center of our earth is hotter than the sun because it's under all that pressure. So what I'm doing is I'm like super conducting my chi by like compressing it with energy from ground, energy from above and it gets very, very intense. And then I bring it up to whatever I want it to be. Sometimes it'll be like the ball of my hand. I bring it up and I'm like, wabba! You know, that's like a great technique for spoon bending. Ooh. That spoon will just be like, ooh! <laughs> you can melt a spoon with that. Yes. So uh, working on chi energy is like super powerful. And understand, you're working with very powerful energy so, you know, treat it as that. <laughs> um, right. Does anyone have any uh, questions? Beautiful. So this state that we came to throughout the class, even when I'm just ch talking, consciously give your body permission to return to that state. Do not actively return yourself. Do not, okay, I need to align this and like, don't do that. <laughs> what you want to do is just say, you know what? I give my body permission. I give myself permission to return to the flowing state. And you can say it however you like. Um, for me, I say, ooh, feet, could you please relax? And immediately everything goes into alignment because my body knows what to do. Um, so that's, you may find it takes as little as just starting it and everything triggers on up. Right. Um, okay, so I, I have to tell you at this moment, like all of you have a lot of guides with you, each of each of us does at this here and now. So when I'm looking around the room, each person, I see like a little, you know, energetic mob with each person. Um, so be ready to receive messages from some of your past lives, from your higher self, your guardian angel, your energetic guides, guardians, your soul family, all of you's got a little mob around you. As we're opening up more, wherever your frequency is, it's like whoever can connect on that frequency will be the first ones to come through. So one of you might have a guardian angel come through, one might have a past life come through, someone might be getting direct downloads from source or, you know, like fairies might come through for someone. So be open today and give yourself permission to receive whatever comes through. 
it may be a childhood memory that presents itself because there is like a resonance in there or something that it wants to remind you this is a frequency that you like the frequency you're in now you used to be in when you played in the garden and you could see the sprites when you were a child or so whatever comes through accept it and give gratitude thank it um, if your first thought is, is this real or is it my imagination? That's always an indicator that it's real. Okay. <laughs> I have many thoughts in my day that I don't question. Is this real? But the moment I question, is it real? It's because I'm getting a frequency that's not part of my everyday frequency. So as soon as you question, is it real? You're like, oh yes. Thank you. Question. Now I know it's real. So who wait? I did play with the fairies when I was six years old in the garden. Awesome. So just everything that comes through, accept it and allow it to take your frequency in more um, coordination with your guides and guardians who are actively working with us today. Yes. It means you're learning, okay? Um, the things that come through can come in through in many ways. It might be a memory. It might be a random thought. It might be you hear someone whispering next to you. It might be in the back of your mind. You feel like someone's talking to you in the back of your mind. Then you're like, am I making that up? Or is someone speaking in the back of my mind? Or it might be just a feeling or a download of information, or it might be uh, you, you, know, you see something, you smell something, or it might be like suddenly lights go out in the house. Um, was it, I was in meditation the other day, and, um, and just after, so I hit a moment in meditation where I said, um, can I have a sign this is real? My laptop that was upstairs uh, turned on a video. <laughs> now, it's a video I had been watching on YouTube that I had paused like hours earlier. And I had like multiple other pages open. So this was not even the page that was open. So I'm downstairs meditating alone in the house. Suddenly I hear men's voices upstairs. And I like jumped out of the meditation, freaked out came running upstairs, the, the YouTube page was the top page on and the video was playing. So I'm like, oh, okay, that's a sign. That's a sign, you know, a weird sign, <laughs> an adrenaline inducing sign, but it was definitely a sign. Um, so whatever comes through. The, Just accept it. The more you accept it, the more you accept it. Um, I'm walking down the street and suddenly a bird starts singing. And I'm like, oh, is that a sign for me? Well, I don't have that question over the last thousand birds I passed. It's this one. So there was a sign there. Um, and then another time I'm walking down and a butterfly goes, I'm like, oh, I know this is a sign because I feel it. When you first open up, to receiving non-3D signs and messages, it takes them a lot of effort to get a little bit through. But the more you open and fully accept, the more they can send huge messages with no effort. So whatever comes through in whatever way, shape, or form, accept it. Here's the thing, the things we're most likely to deny are things that it makes no difference to anyone if we accept or deny. If I'm walking down the street and I believe that this flower calling me to smell it is a sign, it doesn't matter to anyone in the world if I think it's a sign or not. So I, you know, I may as well accept it. If it's a sign or not, I've just made it a sign. You know, I'll be like, and I've inhaled a beautiful flower aroma and I have a lovely moment and I'm 
you know, relaxed and open. And then suddenly my angel is able to come through and say, oh, good. Now you're a little more receptive. I've been trying to get you to smell flowers for the last hour. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just remember, it doesn't hurt anyone for you to accept everything is a sign because that allows you to become open. And then later you'll go, oh, okay, I think like maybe three quarters of that stuff might not have been signs, but it doesn't matter because now I'm like so open, I understand what's signs and what's not. You know? Think about if you are first learning to dance. Like you do not become a perfect dancer before you go on the dance floor. You go out with your partner, you step on each other's feet, you're missing the rhythm, you're whatever, but you're having fun, hopefully. And then the day comes when you're spinning around the dance floor with grace and agility. So, you know, just do it and have fun. Life is more fun when we just have fun. Um, so, um, there's like a little bit of a battle going on uh, between your guides because some of them want me to do cord cutting first and some of them want me to do uh, like connecting with your higher self first. So I think we're going to combine the two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they're, they're like driving me a little nuts right now. <laughs> so uh, we're going to do this really fun technique where um, we're going to become re in alignment with self. We're going to travel up our horror line, which is the line of energy that, you know, we're not just existing in our 3D body. We have existence outside. We have our aura we emanate. We have our line of energy that connects us to our soul, our higher self, to our past lives. So we're, uh, we have many chakras above and below our physical body. Uh, there are some people who are really enlightened who work with the line of energy that goes from physical self to soul self all the way up to God. And there are some people who can travel that line of energy all the way to source, to the point of all life creation, and still maintain consciousness. Yeah. Yeah, so that is our, our goal for ourselves to become that grounded so that we become, become that enlightened. Yeah. Um, so we are going to travel up our horror line. Um, some of you may see yourself rising up in like a lotus flower or you can see yourself getting into an elevator of light. You know, we're just going to go up and up to the bardo, the twilight realm. It's a land that exists between time and space, between physical and spiritual. Um, and most people see it as like a mountaintop in eternal twilight. But from there, you can actually see everywhere and everything, all dimensions connect here. Um, we are going to go to the Bardo, the Twilight Realm, and you will experience it however you experience it. Every time I go there, I have a different experience because I'm going with a different resonance of self to go there. When you are in the Twilight Realm, whomever you call, is contractually obligated to show up and be there with you. Um, so we will go there and we will call our souls to come and join us, merge with our higher self, with our soul. Some of you will, may experience your soul as like a collective of your higher self and all of your past lives and you get absorbed into the collective that is the many and entirety of you. Some of you may see your soul as like a ball of light, or you may see it as yourself, you know, like your twin self only may be a little more mature. Some of you um, may see that you are a human soul. Some of you may see you are not a human soul. 
So it will be a unique experience for each. We will connect with, have conversation with, merge with our souls. And then, um, okay, before we merge with our souls, we're going to do a cord cutting ceremony between ourselves and our souls. This is what they're saying. This is wonderful because this is why I say, you know, it's called cord cutting ceremony. I really prefer calling it a cord cleansing ceremony because you can never sever love. All you can do is enhance and magnify love. When you connect to your soul, to your higher self, and you perform a cord cleansing ceremony, you are releasing everything that is below the frequency of love, and you're powering up the direct love connection between yourself and yourself. So this will be very powerful. And then at that point, we will merge with our souls. Yes. Uh, the cord cutting ceremony is wonderful. I recommend, I know people do, cord, like every time I go into a corporate meeting, I do a cord cutting before I go in uh, with everyone who's in the meeting. And then when we have the meeting, it's amazing. Everything goes my way and everyone has a good time and all the petty <laughs> corporate games are like that. Cord cutting is wonderful because it's a love enhancing ceremony. Okay. Yep. So when you're saying we connect with our souls, which is like our, our basic core, who would you say, or like how would you describe who's going and connecting? Well, you will. Yeah. Go to the twilight realm and then call your soul, your higher self to yeah. be with so you. what would you call the, what you just said, the you, because the soul is really the main. No, you're right? one element of your soul. Your soul is made up of all your past lives, mm -hmm. your future lives, your who you are when you're not in life. Just because you're in life now, your soul doesn't stop being. Your yeah. soul's up there doing soul That's stuff. What I'm so who do you call like is this my my three D like persona going up there to meet with yeah. my core? So Kim will go up to meet with the totality of your full being. Mm -hmm. Is it my soul or what? Well, so think about it this way. Um, I'm going to give myself as an example. I am Bonita in this life. Before I was Bonita, I was many other lives because I've incarnated many times. When these lives stop being, you know, when I finish the life experience and I die, that being doesn't stop. Like when I die, Bonita doesn't stop existing. Bonita returns to the soul and becomes one member of the soul. When we are in our soul state, you know, we're not 3D physical. We are energetic beings. All right? We are energetic beings. You know, we are in a way our own collective that creates our own mandala of all of the past lives that are connected with the soul. Just as any collective, like for me, Bonita, when I'm with my soul, the soul is one being made up of many beings, each of whom can leave and return and exist as an individual or be connected with any combination within. So form is always changing or not? I mean, form is a little bit of our mental construct because we're energetic. So in past lives, or are they just in this one time? Well, yeah, we, I mean, we can be alive in more than one life at a time. Just as any skill development, like when you're early in life, if you're a young soul, you're generally going to do one life at a time and have a little time between lives to learn your lessons. Uh, again, like taking it back to the dancers. When you're first learning to dance, you're going very slowly and you're really focusing on it. But the more you incarnate, the older the soul is. And FYI, just assume if you're in this class, you're an old soul. Yes. 
someone who's in their within their first hundred lives is not going to come to a class like this. Um, so you get to the point where you're like, you know what, I don't have time or interest in being born, living to age 90, dying, and then coming and starting over. Because the majority of, say, this one life is going to be between age 40 and 60 is the part where my soul contracts, my purpose is important. So I'm going to be born in this life before another life dies. So at this moment, I'm like a baby in one life in Bulgaria. I'm a middle-aged person in Northern Africa, and I'm a very, very old person in, you know, uh, South America. Like, we don't need to be just one life at a time. You know, because it, so you have energy, can just like a little here, a little here. We can also send, like if Susan's going to life, and I'm like, oh, Susan, that thing you're doing, the challenge you have, I'm really good at that and I love doing it. Let me send a part of my soul with you to help you make it easier. And then she's like, oh, great. Yeah, go ahead. Or I might be like, hey, Will, the thing you're doing in this life, two lives from now, I plan on doing that. So can I send part of me with you so that then when you're done with life and the energy comes back to me, and then when I go to that life, I already have a little experience. So instead of being a multi-life lesson that I have to learn the hard way, I'm bringing a little skill and technique. Okay? Yes. Yeah. I know. I actually um, have someone who is alive right now who is like a dear, dear friend that he and I are of the same soul. And um, we were not actually meant to meet in this life. Uh, it was just curious happenstances brought him to this part of the world. Um, and uh, we have zero in common. He's like 20 years younger than me. Um, we have totally different belief systems, but wow, we just love each other so much. We cannot, like we're always there for each other, 100%. We have nothing in common. There's no reason for us to be friends, but we come from the same soul. So, of course, we're like brother and sister. We're like one together. We're like telepathic. Whenever one of us has issues going on, the other one's immediately aware of it. How did you know? Um, it took me a little while to figure out. It was actually Lowell Smith mm -hmm. who, um, well, I finally was like, wait a minute. I, I feel like, like we resonate too much exactly the same. And I went to Lowell, and I'm like, what's going on with this? And he's like, yeah, you're of the same soul, so don't date yourself. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and I was like, well, I wouldn't anyway. I have children young, older than him, so like that would just be creepy. <laughs> How do I say to my oldest son, here's your stepdad. Is it called soulmate? Because people... That's totally different, and I actually don't want to get into that right now because that's a whole other. But we have entire soul families, and you know, just remember your soulmates and you will not always, not everyone has a soulmate. I don't have one. Um, and you and your soulmate, like you might be in a life and your soulmate is like watching over you as a guide or a guardian or a protector. Like you're not always in life together. Yeah, that would get a little boring after a while, trust me. Um, and you and your soulmate may not always be romantic together. I know people where, like I do a reading, and there's a life where they were twins. They chose to be twins in a life where, you know, so it's, um, but we, you can still have grand romance with someone without, and you feel like for this life you're my soulmate. But in a previous life I murdered you in battle, so... <laughs> Okay. Okay, where are you going? I have a conference tomorrow. Are you going to come back? I can't. Okay. If, do you want to go downstairs? Okay. 